for everyone following my channel, um, I have showed the past weeks uh, many experiments regarding this, say, very, very basic shortwave receiver. Uh, I have uh, told how I did experiments to make this VFO <coughs> uh, and uh, high frequency unit and the IF unit. And when you want to make such a radio, uh, this could be a good setup. And another good setup is to make it on a copper clad board. Uh, and use that board as the minus, the ground. I've made this circuit in such a way that the ground of the radio is on minus. Uh, well, a good idea, for instance, to show what I mean is this. It's seven of all the uh, schematics that I want to show. In fact, the final schematic, but perhaps it must be the first one. This is a good setup. And I have made it that way. VFO is in the middle and it is shielded on all sides. That prevents that such a VFO strays out the frequency also to the antenna circuit. And that means that it uh, gets back from the VFO into the antenna circuit, is amplified again, and even is amplified in a fierce way, because the high F amplifier uh, amplifies the radio signals in a fierce way. And that can make that the circuit starts to oscillate. So, uh, that's the reason why it's shielded. You can also shield it on the top. I did not do that. You can do that, but there, the effect is often when you shield it on the top that the frequency of the coils uh, gets somewhat higher. Anyway, uh, that's the reason why I don't do that. So here the VFO in the middle, the coarse and the fine tuning potentiometer. I will show the schematic later. Uh, switch with which uh, you can switch between two bands in this case though the whole setup of this circuit, this radio schematic uh, can work between 2 MHz megacycles and approximately 15 megacycles. Here is the high frequency amplifier. You can see here a trimmer, aluminum trimmer uh, and that trimmer is switched parallel to the tank to the antenna coil so that you can tune in in this case between these two bands around 6 megacycles and 9 megacycles and there's also an additional switch with here with which I can switch an extra capacitor in uh, that has the same effect to get to a lower frequency band here is the IF filter in its final stage, the yellow dot here is the ceramic or crystal filter. And you can see here a relay. That relay uh, affects the coupling to the filter with the help of two small value capacitors. I will tell more about it later. Here the power supply looks sloppy but is not sloppy and the transformer and the audio amplifier and the loudspeaker here and forgotten the audio preamplifier that's here so um, this shows the whole setup green is the earth wiring there's only one connection here to the chassis the shielding and the VFO is soldered here on these two locations the template to the shielding. One and only earth is very important but of course when you make it on a copper clad board the whole board is mass minus and that could have a good effect. Anyway uh, let's go to the first stage this is the high frequency stage 
amplifying the um, the signal from the antenna. The complete circuit. And it's important that um, when you want to receive a certain frequency band, the antenna is key. And I made it in such a way that I can now switch between these two frequency bands. Uh, for other frequencies, higher or lower, you need an other antenna coil. Though this coil is usable with a zero up to 150 picofarad uh, tuning capacitor between 6 megacycles and approximately 15 megacycles. Outdoor antenna hangs in my garden, 2.5 meter, coax cable necessary, was necessary because I had a lot of man-made noise and that's here connected to the minus. Here you can switch in an extra capacitor to get to the lower frequency bands. This is the um, high amplification. It both changes the um, voltage to the field effect transistor and to the BF199. It's a quite good uh, HF unit, though you must be careful when you use that high F high frequency amplification. When you give too much amplification to the radio, uh, it can start to be a little uh, to oscillate sometimes. And uh, more important, the radio signal could get so fierce that you get distortion. This switch is a safety switch. When you have an outdoor antenna, the fat can easily be, say, damaged by static charges on the antenna. We go to two. I will only show this very short. It's the way I made it. You can make it in another way. It's in fact what I made here. We go to four at first. The uh, IF amplifier. You can see the ceramic filters in the middle of the screen, the yellow ones, and the this is the mixer transistor. It gets um, its energy from the VFO and from the antenna coil. I read here 100 picofarad, but it is um, 39 picofarad anyway. Mixer unit. And important to tell um, when you followed my earlier video about that IF amplifier, I talked about making the bandwidth of that IF amplifier sharper with the help of a coupling capacitor of a low value. And I've done that here. And they are switched on and off with a relay. When the relay is in a rest position, it is shortcut, that capacitor, but when the relay is activated and opens, uh, the capacitors get active and sharpen the bandwidth of that filter. Here is the amplitude modulated, uh, modulated detection. This is the bias diode. You can set that to a certain value where that germanium diode works at its best. Noise reduction here. Uh, Audio frequency pre-amplifier, don't give it too much amplification. You can set that amplification here, we said 1k potentiometer, because otherwise it will start to oscillate. So here is that potentiometer in my case. So uh, not, uh, not too fierce uh, amplification is necessary here. Pin connections. Oh, 
overview again. Go to 1080p on YouTube to see it in its the schematic um, at its best. This is the VFO, the variable frequency oscillator. The whole setup here can be used for frequencies between 2 megacycles and 15 megacycles. Uh, for frequencies between 2 and 6 megacycles, you have to change the antenna curl. Give it more windings and use a, a parallel capacitor of 0 up to 150 picofarad. Then you can tune in the antenna curl. The VFO has a, a, a separate stabilizer that was done by purpose. Because uh, the principle of this VFO is that we uh, change the voltage to a field of voltage to a field effect transistor, and that changes the frequency. So that means that the supply voltage must be very very stable. And here you see how that's done: fine tuning potentiometer, coarse tuning potentiometer. This is the coil for nine megacycles. This is the coil for, uh, say, six megacycles. Stabilizer. Here you can switch between these two coils. And you can add more capacitance parallel to that uh, circuit, to that uh, uh, coil. And we use the natural capacitance that's present in the first part of the field effect transistor. You can see that there is here, here, there is no um, parallel capacitor. Of course you can use it to bring the frequency somewhat down. But uh, the principle is here that we uh, try to say uh, tune with the help of these two potentiometers. And there are approximately say 20 or 50 VFO circuits on my YouTube channel. So you can also use another VFO for another frequency band. Um, I think that was all. Perhaps I can show uh, how I made that relay circuit. You see the relay. That's wired into the IF amplifier and it shortcuts uh, the critical coupling capacitors of the IF amplifier. They are here. The relay opens or closes, that means that the uh, capacitors have influence or don't have influence on the bandwidth of the IF filter. Here and here. And when you want to do that, uh, mount the relay directly into the IF amplifier. Because the wiring here is of course critical. When you mount your relay, say, uh, 40 centimeters away from that IF amplifier, it surely will not work. Due to the long wiring you get oscillations, etc, etc. So the wiring here must be as short as possible. Uh, I don't say that often, by the way. <laughs> anyway, in this case, uh, it's real. And here, finally, how I wired that relay in. Looks uh, complicated, but is not complicated at all. This is the first, say, resonant unit. And this is the second one. First resonant unit goes from the collector to the base of the second transistor and then from the, it's amplified and then the signal goes again to the filter but on say this resonant unit. And I have not showed the audio amplifier. <coughs> you can use say many audio amplifiers. There are a few audio amplifiers on my YouTube channel. Perhaps I will give the link to usable uh, audio amplifiers in this case. 
And furthermore, use a good quality transformer that shielded here. Uh, I had say strange. It was not hum, but 50 hertz sound through the audio amplifier. But when I shielded it here, the steel housing of the transformer it went away. So that's important. Uh, the regulator, the first regulator, is a completely classical uh, series regulator that gives out 12 volt. Many circuits about that are on my channel and also on the World Wide Web. Here the potentiometer with which you can set the bias of the detection diode. <coughs> it's a germanium diode. The type number is in the schematic. Here you can set the IF amplification. Here the HF unit. Uh, well, you can see here the shielding on the back side. The front is made of wood, triplex. Here, triplex. And on the back side, glued, um, tin plate, steel, not aluminium, steel, from um, beer cans or perhaps soft drink cans, other soft drinks. Of course, beer is not a soft drink, but anyway. Um, and here the front, with all the switches, it's the absolute minimum setup. So here we have the uh, noise reduction, volume control, fine tuning of the VFO, coarse tuning, switch for the frequency bands. HF, high frequency amplification. Uh, this wire goes to that relay. So here we can set the bandwidth. And here we have that extra capacitor that bridges the antenna coil to make it suitable for lower frequencies. Um, such a trimmer here is very important. Uh, because otherwise you cannot get, say, a good sharp bandwidth of the antenna coil. So you say more or less absolutely need it. Of course you can also use a um, <coughs> variable capacitor going from, say, 0 or 5 